You may be forgiven if, when you think of the Catholic Church, pop artist Andy Warhol doesn't immediately spring to mind. But when St. Louis University brought Warhol's silver clouds to its Museum of Contemporary Religious Art, it made perfect sense. The clouds, while they're not overtly religious, you don't find any uh, iconographic representation of any particular tradition. What it does do, it, it's accessible to all traditions and to people of goodwill from any place because it lifts up your spirit. It fills you with awe and wonder. It's immediate, it wraps around you, and that to me is part of the experience of the spiritual and religious tradition. Two thousand six was the fortieth anniversary of Warhol's creation of the clouds. And this installation, including more than sixty silver clouds, is the largest ever. The materials and instructions are provided by the Warhol Museum in Pittsburgh. St. Louis U figured out the rest. Hey, 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 hey. The clouds come about fifty in a box. The box looks like an oversized pizza box. This is what the cloud looks like in its uninflated state. It is coated in aluminum. It's mylar. And this is the valve. We put about eighteen seconds of helium into the cloud and then we go back and forth between air and helium until we get the desired effect which is zero gravity so that when we let go of the cloud it will hover and by doing that it will respond to all the fans we have twenty six fans in here and it will respond to the various currents that these fans create do they leak some of them do leak and we're discovering that some of them are just fine they're they're imperfect like us The museum's main exhibit hall is a former chapel, so figuring out how to set it up in a space that large and making the clouds behave was a challenge. It's all about, this is thing is supposed to be about freedom and kind of a, uh, an exalted lift. And so what we tried to do was to come up with a way that we could keep them inside without it look like they, looking like they were in a cage. And happily, our theater department came up with a fish line. There's over 440 strands of fish line that go from the 10-foot walls to the nearly 30-foot ceilings. It took almost a month to put those up. And uh, when, these, when the shades come down on our stained glass windows, the fish line will be invisible. There won't be any light behind them. They'll, people won't even notice that they're there. And somehow it'll look like the clouds are just staying inside the center space of our museum. The connection between Andy Warhol and the church is not as big a stretch as you might think. Though St. Louis University is a Jesuit institution, its museum represents art from all of the world's major religions. I think it really explores the um, Jesuit tradition of education and excellence and for allowing there to be um, a pursuit of knowledge for knowledge's sake and not being confined by um, the catechism of the church. These clouds really are uplifting. There is a sense of joy, the sense of wonder, uh, the sense of awe. And I think that's part of every religious tradition. That's the experiential part of the religious tradition, not just the creeds, but actual experience. And actually, Andy Warhol, in spite of his edgy pop image, had another side to his character. Well, Warhol is one of those enigmatic characters. Uh, he, uh, he did things that were iconoclastic. He, uh, tweaked, he loved to tweak people. And so to, uh, he, he more or less rubbed uh, mud into the face of the abstract expressionist when he came up with Campbell's soup cans and products. Uh, so you had people as products, movie stars as products. But there was a deeply religious part of this man. He kept that quiet. He went to church every day. There's something wonderfully disorienting about these clouds. Something about them that takes you somewhere else. It, it's kind of an unusual feeling. It is, Patrick. Uh, we have people who come in here. We had some faculty members who would come in here at the end of a week a tough week. They would sit here at the end and watch these for an hour. I would go in and get them a glass of Chardonnay and they would just sit here. And uh, whatever is on your mind, it disappears while you're in here. Patrick, this is something we never anticipated. It's an amazing optical illusion. Through the silk fabric, when you close the curtains, you don't see the people. You just see this wonderful abstract work of light, arcs of light, almost like you're at the bottom of the sea, those phosphorescent uh, sea creatures that live way down deep. 
and it's a it's relaxing. It just gives you a chance to see things in a different light, in a different way that you wouldn't see normally, and they're absolutely beautiful as well. So often our experience of art is something static on a wall, something you look at. Usually you don't get to touch things, but when they start coming at you, uh, and, and I think part of it is that the clouds seem to have a personality. Uh, they are at times stubborn or persistent. Uh, they'll nudge you, they'll kind of come floating by. Um, I think it's just, it, it speaks to the child and people when they come to visit. And why shouldn't art, spirituality, and the senses have a place to play? And what better place than among the clouds?